Welcome to the online microwave engineering lab. Today we will be learning how to measure power of a microwave signal using power meter. Power is the energy dissipated per unit of time. Using this power meter, we can measure low to medium power levels ranging between 10 microwatts and 10 milliwatt. Power is usually measured in dB where dBm is the dB for milliwatt and dBw is dB for watts. Look the expressions for dBm and dBw on your lab book. You can use calculators for converting milliwatt to dBm or use the graph displayed here for such conversion. For the conversion of dB watt to dBm, you can simply add 30 to dBw. For example, 20 dBw is equal to 50 dBm. Look at the circuit in the figure. The internal circuit diagram of the power meter is shown there. That is basically a Wheatstone brace where three arms of the breeze is located inside the power meter and the fourth arm is the thermistor. All of the resistors below are equal and nearly 100 ohms. The breeze is operated by a signal source of 10.5 kilohertz. This signal is called the audio signal. Use the zero adjust knob on the power meter to balance the circuit so that we see AC emitter reading zero when no microwave signal is coming to the thyristor. Sorry, coming to the th thermistor. But at presence of a microwave signal, the thermistor resistance RT will change and the breeze will be imbalanced. The voltage at point C will be different from point B, point T. Therefore, AC emitter will show a reading equivalent to the microwave signal po power received by the thermistor. The assume the audio power without the presence of microwave signal is PO and the audio power with the presence of microwave power is P1. Therefore, the microwave power P is equal to P0 minus P1. We will set the power meter at 3 milliwatt range and adjust the zero adjust knob to 11 millimeter position C a zero power on the power meter on the power meter then measure the audio signal using oscilloscope and compute the audio power P naught at this stage. After that, we set the variable attenuator to get a reading of 2 milliwatt on the power meter. At this point, we also see the audio signal on the oscilloscope. The power of the audio signal is P1 for this case. The difference between P0 and P1 will be 2 milliwatt. Let us start. We need a gun oscillator, a gun oscillator power supply and oscilloscope. Look at the circuit diagram. We have to prepare a circuit diagram like this. See the settings for the power supply and the oscilloscope. Step 7 is to measure the audio power only. Step 10 for applying microwave power. Step 12 is to measure the reduced audio power because of the presence of microwave signal.
So here is the setup. So to repair the setup, we have to connect GAN oscillator with variable attenuator. So we use two connector to get a firm connection and then we connect the thermistor with variable attenuator. place the setup on the supports so we connect the now we have to adjust the variable attenuator so here I show you how the variable attenuator can be adjusted. So look, the zero reading on the variable adjuster. So I, I we are, you can see the zero mark shown there. So the, at first we are trying to get zero. So this is zero now. So the zero on the round scale is aligned with the axial line then I move one circle that is 0.5 millimeter another full rotation is 1 millimeter and 1.5 so if you stop at 10 that will be 1.6 If we stop at 45, 45, this will be 1.95. Now I go to 11. So if you set 11 on the variable attenuator, no signal can pass through this because the blade of the attenuator you can see the blade inside the holes inside the hole here the blade is at the middle of the hole so if the blade is at the middle no signal can pass through this so the, sim the signal coming at the input will be completely attenuated so the output signal will be zero now I show you how to get maximum power reading from the thermistor so you see we have uh, three controls on a thermistor on the thermistor one is the movable short circuit so you can this is the movable short circuit you can move it to get a maximum power reading so you have to adjust the location to get the maximum power reading. There is another uh, screw here that is called matching screw. So we have two matching screws. We can play with these matching screws to maximize the power level. So we, now we are going to show you how to get the maximum power level by using uh, movable short circuit you see if you play with the short circuit the power level will go up and down so we saw it in lab one so I am again re reminding you how to do it so you see if you pull it out and in you will get
So we need to find the high maximum amount of power. So as the oscillator produce sine wave, so power level will go up and down. So we have to tune the highest power, the location at which we get the highest power or maximum power. So now you can So we log this, we got the highest power and we log this uh, position. So this is how we can find the maximum power reading or adjusting the thermistor to its maximum power level. So almost in every experiment we need to adjust the thermistor mount. Now we have to measure the power. So to measure the power we need power meter and oscilloscope. So I use a T connector. One will be connected with the power meter and another terminal will be connected to the oscilloscope. So I connecting oscilloscope with one port of the T connector and I am connecting power meter to the other terminal. So this cord will going to the input terminal of the power meter. So you see you can find oscilloscope a signal on the oscilloscope. So I am showing you the settings. So there are a lot of knobs to control the wave shapes on the oscilloscope screen. So you have to see the time limit should be 20 microseconds and voltage is 50 millivolt per division. So I am adjusting to 20 micro, yeah, 50, 100 microseconds now, 50 microseconds, 20 microseconds. So I adjust this settings. So we are, we can see the power level is 3.1. Uh, so the peak to peak is 3.1 volt. So now I am trying to make it 11. So I want to make sure that no signal can reach to the power meter. So I am going making 11 millimeter on my variable attenuator and disconnecting the power supply of the GAN oscillator. So if you disconnect the power supply, GAN oscillator cannot produce a signal, but still there is a setting. So I, I set 3 milliwatt range. So okay, I see 3 milliwatt. So now I, now I am adjusting the power meter reading to 0. So I use the 0 adjust knob to get a 0 power reading on the power meter. So now there is no microwave signal available but you can see a power of 1.77 volt peak to peak voltage is 1.77 this power is coming from the Wheatstone breeze like power meter now i apply a power one milliwatt power from the variable attenuator. 
So I adjust the bullet position to get 1 milliwatt power. You can see if I apply 1 milliwatt, the consequence will be shown on the power uh, oscilloscope. The signal level will get down. Now I am playing with the matching screws to maximize the power level. So you see the power level is going up from 1 milliwatt. I already set the movable short circuit, so I don't want to show it now. So now you see power level is, now I change the power level to 3 milliwatt. So you know, now my gun oscillator giving 3 milliwatt. Now we set 1.4 milliwatt on the power meter. So we can find its equivalent dBm using the power meter. See the dBm range uh, printed below the watt range. So at 3 milliwatt, the equivalent dBm is 5. So if you choose the range, then the from the meter you can see the dBm is 1.46 dBm. You can also find the same thing using calculator by using the equation 2.1. For this lab, you need to prepare a report. Just fill out the blank spaces on step 7, step 12, 13 and 14 and complete the review questions and ready for the quiz lab assessment test next week. So the assessment test will be a multiple choice type question from lab 1 and, and 2.